KLT. Good morning and welcome. My name is Patrick Burke and I have the pleasure of serving as chairman of the nonprofit Washington Regional Alcohol Program, or RAF. For those of you who don't know us, RAF is a 39-year-old coalition of diverse interests using effective education, innovative programs, and targeted advocacy to end alcohol-impaired driving and underage drinking in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. RAF however, may be best known to area residents via the organization's popular free safe ride service to prevent drunk driving, Sober Ride, and we'll surely talk about that later this morning. I'd like to welcome you on this wonderful day to RAP's 24th annual and in-person Law Enforcement Awards and Holiday Campaign kickoff. This morning, not only will, be, will, will we be announcing RAP's Holiday Sober Ride, Sober Ride campaign, but also honor those local law enforcement professionals who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in the fight against drunk driving in 2021. Just two important housekeeping notes. In addition to today's limited capacity, social distance staging, we kindly remind you to wear masks when not eating, drinking, or otherwise talking at the podium and that we're currently broadcasting today's ceremony on Facebook Live, seen via RAF's social media platform. To now get this morning's 24th annual event off to a great start, I'd like to introduce you to someone who is no stranger to anyone who has attended RAF's largest annual event in recent years. He's a seventh term U.S. Congressman representing Virginia's 11th District, which includes Fairfax County, Prince William County, the city of Fairfax, and the very spot that we're gathered here today in Northern Virginia. Prior to his election to Congress, he served 14 years on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, including five years as its chairman. Without further ado, and with today's official opening remarks, please join me in welcoming rap friend, Representative Jerry Connolly. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you so much. And it's great to be with you again and in person. Uh, and I hope uh, this is the beginning of it of a possibility for us to gather in person more often. But we know that the COVID virus is still with us. Um, and uh, just had a friend whose sister died from COVID um, last week. Um, and uh, it's very much still with us. So please do be careful um, out there. And for God's sake, get vaccinated and make sure your families are vaccinated. Um, it is a protection. This program is so important, um, and I try to make sure I'm here every year. Um, you save lives. Um, you know, there are lots of aspects of law enforcement that can be mundane, are certainly dangerous, that are often taken for granted or unappreciated in the community. But this one saves lives. This one makes a difference in families. The idea of losing a loved one in a time of celebration, holidays, is particularly heartbreaking. And when you talk to families of lost loved ones at this time of year, because somebody was drinking and driving, a completely preventable act, it, 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 it colors forever that family's idea of holidays, Christmas. It will forever mark them, and it will forever be a, a dark cloud in their family's ability to try to recover and move on. Preventing that tragedy from happening 
She's the mission of this program. And, the, and, and you're making great progress. I was looking at some of the data, and I'll share it with you, but you know, since 1991, 79,000 free or discounted safe rides under the Sober Ride program, sponsored by RAP, Local alcohol and drug impaired traffic fatalities down 20% um, between 2019 and 2020. Regional alcohol and drug related traffic injuries down 26, almost 27% in that time period. Regional alcohol and or drug impaired traffic fatalities decreased 20% during that time period. That's incredible. That means we're making progress. The word's getting out. We're also making it socially unacceptable to drink and drive. And it's that social peer pressure that ultimately is going to work, but it's got to be backed up with enforcement. People have got to know there are consequences. That changes behavior. If nothing else changes behavior, that one does. So being out there, which is dangerous work, you know that, makes a difference. And I can tell you, on behalf of the entire community, thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for trying to make sure that those people who are drinking and driving get the help they need and get off the road. So this holiday season, we celebrate progress, real progress. It's making a difference. And thank you to the bottom of my heart on behalf of the community for continuing to be willing to do it. God bless you all and have a safe holiday. Thanks so much, Congressman Connolly. If you can join me for just one second, we've got a little uh, a gift for you to thank you for being with us again this morning. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks once again for those comments. And before I introduce you to today's Master of Ceremonies, if you see me rushing out, I'm not being rude. My son actually graduates from the D.C. Police Academy at 10.30, so I've got to run there. Uh, Pam Sims, Bob Glover, our next generation of uh, hopefully MPD traffic officers. All right, that's a good <laughs> And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to today's Master of Ceremonies. You know her as NBC Washington's trusted traffic reporter, and where you can watch her each morning on News 4 Today as she helps Greater Washington residents navigate the area's highways, byways, and parkways. What you may not know, however, is that in addition to her being a Washington area native, she is also an Emmy Award winning journalist whose on-air stints have included anchoring the morning show on KDBR in Denver, as well as serving as an anchor and reporter on both News Channel 8 here in DC as well as for NBC 25 in Hagerstown, Maryland. Helping RAP navigate this, our 24th annual Law Enforcement Awards and Holiday Campaign kickoff, and kindly reprising her role from the last six years, thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming today's MC, Melissa Malay. Congrats to you, proud papa, I would think. Holy cow, that's amazing. Thank you guys for having me. You probably saw me sitting here and listening on my phone and trying to share this all on Facebook Live, and I uh, inadvertently started sharing it to a Maryland beer lovers group. I was like, oh, maybe I should not do that. <laughs> I've never shared a Facebook Live before, but for now, good. Everything's okay. So good morning, thank you all for being here at this event, so my seventh year doing this, I was telling somebody at the table with Anheuser-Busch earlier that when I started this, I had one child, now I have three, I think we're done. I don't think next year I'm gonna tell you I have like five more, but uh, we're growing. So thanks for being here for RAP's 2021 Law Enforcement Awards Ceremony and Holiday Campaign Kickoff. We of course appreciate your support, I appreciate seeing some same faces every year and some new ones as well. And I have to say how nice it is to be in person this year. Uh, last year, poor Kurt was calling me and trying to get me to do this from my basement, and I sent him about 53 emails of uh, different awardees. So I appreciate being here in person. I think everybody probably does. On behalf of RAP, I'd like to thank the Metro Washington Air Force Authority Police Department for kindly co-hosting this event with us. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. We also extend our thanks to today's sponsors, which include the Beer Institute, Breakthrough Beverage, Foundation for Advancing Alcohol Responsibility, Geico, George Washington University Hospital, Glory Days Grill, Interstate Moving Relocation Logistics, and to lift. In addition, we also recognize and thank this year's holiday sober ride sponsors, including 395 Express Lines, not sure what we would do without them on some busy days, Anheuser Busch and its local distributors, Beer Institute, Brown Foreman, Constellation Brands, District of Columbia Association of Beverage Alcohol Wholesalers, Enterprise Rent a Car, Foundation for Advancing Alcohol Responsibility, Giant Food, Glory Days Grill, Heineken, Campbell Jackson, Lyft, Molson Coors Beverage Company, New Belgium Brewing, Restaurant Association, Metropolitan Washington, and the Washington Area New Automobile Dealers Association. Thank you all for making this possible. In addition, RAPS 2021 public partner Silver Ride sponsors include the District of Columbia Department of Transportation's Highway Safety Office, Maryland Department of Transportation, Motor Vehicle Administration's Highway Safety Office, and the Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles. As you can see, saving lives on Greater Washington's roadways is a team effort. As Pat mentioned earlier this morning, we're here for a couple of reasons, one of which is to announce RAPS Holiday Sober Ride Initiative. The program, as you guys know, is a key factor in RAPS fight against drunk driving and is especially important during this holiday season. RAPS strive to keep our roads safe all year long, but the holiday season is a time that really touches our hearts. At this time, and to officially announce RAPS 2021 Holiday Sober Ride Campaign, a service which starts next week, I'd like to introduce you to RAPS Sober Ride Partner, the ride sharing service Lyft, which in the last four years alone, this is a huge number, has helped remove from Greater Washington's roadways 15,000 would-be drunk drivers via RAPS Sober Ride Program. Today, represented by Lyft Strategic Policy Partnerships, Manager and Law Enforcement Liaison, please welcome Ed Hutchison. Thank you so much. Uh, looking around and looking at the list, I have to say I was really impressed to see you know, our friends here from uh, the police departments, sheriffs, troopers, airports, park, police. I mean, you, you guys are out there doing the work and we are you know, certainly appreciative of that. Um, I worked as the traffic safety director for the National Sheriff's Association for 20 years, so I know how hard the job is. Thank you. And I don't know if you've ever had a chance to listen to uh, Pamela Sims' story. I certainly encourage you to do that. It's really impressive. Um, and um, I, I really encourage you to, to sit down with her and just uh, have her share her story. I want to thank you for the invitation to be here um, and to be a part of such a dedicated group working to uh, curb impaired driving. Uh, this is an issue that's very close to me um, and to my own mission. Um, I know that uh, when my family was impacted by a poly impaired driver, it was also a time of celebration, um, so your efforts are especially appreciated here. The work we do in the next weeks is meaningful and impactful, and uh, of course, uh, we all heard the uh, numbers. According to NHTSA, in December of 2019, 837 people lost their lives due to impaired drivers, and uh, historically, during the winter months, nearly 40% of all U.S. traffic deaths involve uh, an impaired driver. <clears throat> Untold others are suffering from catastrophic injuries um, due to those crashes, and uh, these are 100% preventable. 837 souls, these are individuals uh, who are impacted. Uh, research has uh, demonstrated nine individuals are uh, impacted by that, uh, that one crash. So these are mothers, their fathers, uh, their spouses, children, um, that are impacted by that. Nine additional victims traumatized by that. Um, and then there's another number that NHTSA throws out, $9 million. This is how much it costs for each of those, um, those traffic crashes. Uh, this is infrastructure damage, it's insurance, it's prolonged hospital stays. We know what the impact is. And uh, again, 100% uh, preventable, and that uh, what we do here can prevent those drunk drivers, um, every single one of them. Uh, RAP and its uh, corporate sponsors and its allies that you see here um, are, uh, again, proud to offer an alternative to that uh, driving impaired uh, during this holiday season through Sober Ride. Uh, since 1991, uh, uh, RAP's Sober Ride program has removed, I have the number, 81,184 free rides home to would-be drunk drivers in the greater Washington area. And Lyft is proud to be a part of that solution. 
Last year alone, nearly uh, 2,000 people um, in the Washington uh, metropolitan area took advantage of this low-cost uh, and award-winning uh, community service. And this year, starting next week, and operating for a total of 12 consecutive evenings. Um, this is going to be leading up to and including New Year's Eve. Uh, RAP is offering this free uh, safe service to those who are aged 21 and over. Um, each evening during this six uh, hour period, area residents aged 21 and older celebrating with alcohol can download the uh, Lyft app if they don't have it on their phone already. Can't imagine that. Uh, but then entering a, a silver right code in the app's promo section to receive their no cost. Uh, and this is up to uh, safe transportation. Um, a safe, uh, a separate uh, holiday sober ride promo uh, will be released uh, at 9 p.m. on December uh, 17th, 21st, and the 31st at www.soberride.com. Uh, the service is valid for new and existing Lyft users, and of course, all the supply class. And then, uh, of course, a sober ride is offered through the entire Lyft uh, Washington, D.C. coverage area which includes all or part of the District of Columbia, the Maryland counties of Montgomery and Prince George's, and the Northern Virginia counties of Arlington, Fairfax, Loudoun, and Prince William. Uh, Lyft is proud of the role of ride sharing uh, in what it plays uh, in reducing those impaired driving um, figures across the nation. Uh, here in the DC area, partnering with RAP allows us to take our commitment to providing safe, convenient, and affordable transportation a step further participating during times of the year when people are out celebrating and in need of a ride home. Our internal um, analytics uh, demonstrate that the 18 to 35 crowd are um, uh, automatically drawn to using uh, ride share as a convenience. Um, and we know where they're going. We can look at those analytics and see that it's, you know, they're taking these at, uh, in the evening. They're going to places of, you know, bar and restaurants, uh, to places of entertainment. We know that this is effective. We have uh, numbers of studies that are out there that demonstrate that we are going into a community and as that ridership increases, those numbers of uh, incidents, uh, that's uh, it's arrest, it's crashes, it's uh, catastrophic injuries, uh, and it's deaths, those numbers go down. Uh, study after study demonstrate that. So remember that uh, RAP's holiday Silver Ride codes are available on silverride.com. And again, I want to thank you for the invitation to speak here today, uh, and I wish you all a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ed. According to RAP's preliminary 2021 How Safe Are Our Roads report, 72 of our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones were killed in alcohol-impaired traffic crashes in the greater Washington area last year, leaving friends and family to mourn their loss especially hard, of course, during the holiday season. If you're going to be celebrating this holiday season with alcohol, RAP asks that we remind our friends and our family to designate a driver or use sober ride. There are sober ride materials on all of your tables, those little red cards as well, for that literally life-saving local program. It's now my pleasure to introduce the co-host of this year's holiday sober ride campaign kicked off. With us here today is the deputy chief of a local law enforcement agency which has a long prioritized traffic safety and DUI enforcement, believing that indeed traffic safety is public safety. While their primary mission is the safety and security of the 46 million travelers who use the nation's airports, I'm sure that's been really easy the past couple of years. <laughs> They're also committed to the safety of traveling public along the Dulles toll road. Evidence of that public safety commitment is this agency making nearly 50 DUI arrests on that roadway last year alone. Today's next speaker has more than three decades of law enforcement experience and expertise, including most recently serving as Arlington County's police commander of its criminal investigations, special operations SWAT, patrol, internal affairs, human resources, and training divisions. Won't you please join me in welcoming Deputy Chief of the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority Police Department and today's co-host, James Wasson. is of particular concern 
as historically one of this country's deadliest periods when it comes to drunk driving. Mm -hmm. During December 2019 alone, over 800 persons were killed in the United States traffic crashes involving drivers or motorcycle riders with blood alcohol concentrations over 0 0.08. Even worse, over one third of all traffic fatalities occurring in the United States during the Christmas and New Year's holidays involve drunk drivers. The impact of drunk driving is significant for individuals and families without question. The fight against drunk driving is far from over. In the greater Washington area, the friends and families had to mourn the loss of more than 70 people who have died as a result of drunk driving. That being said, police officers and sheriff's deputies from across the region will be out in force this holiday season and doing everything we can to identify and apprehend impaired drivers. As part of the region's Checkpoint Strike Force campaign, sobriety checkpoints and saturation patrols will aid in this continuing fight. In 2020, over 14,350 drivers were arrested for driving under the influence in the greater Washington area. While the work of law enforcement in the Washington metropolitan area has great reward, unfortunately, it is not without peril, as will be exemplified by the next speaker. At this time, I invite the highest ranking officer from each locality represented here today to please come join me at the podium. Chief, please come on up. against drunk driving is going to be won by a coalition approach and we salute RAP in this effort to get drunk drivers off of area roadways. Checkpoint Strike Force is a prime example of a collaborative combined approach to determining and enforcing drunk driving. However, as good as our collective law enforcement efforts are, it is important for our region to have other tools at our disposal. One of these important tools, the safety valve, is the Sober Ride program. I encourage everyone this holiday season to enjoy their friends and family. But if you become impaired from consuming too much, I highly encourage you to have a designated driver or take advantage of our region's safety valve, Sober Ride. Thank you very much. Congratulations again to all award recipients, and have a happy holiday season. Thank you, Chief, and all of the other Chiefs that are up here as well. Now, normally at this time, we would be graced by rap friend Rich Liotta, father of Montgomery County Police Officer Noah, who in 2015, we all know, was struck by an impaired driver and succumbed to his injuries a week later. However, as a number of you are all too well aware, today marks the sixth anniversary of Noah's passing, and Rich and his family are gathered today to respectfully mourn their loss. In as much, I'd like to now call for a moment of silence for both those lost in the line of duty and those who valiantly serve in the front line as the region continues to fight against drunk driving. As Rich would state, our hearts go out to each of you and your families this holiday season. However, we are comforted that via your life-saving work, Noah is still on patrol. As Chief Lawson referenced, the Greater Washington Region is still annually arresting over 14,000 people for driving under the influence. This is a greater than the populations of Fairfax Station and Upper Marlboro combined being arrested for drunk driving every single year. Drunk driving, as we all know, is 100% preventable. It's an issue through these efforts of those in this room and you all aiming to make this better, make this less tragic, and more historic, and we're so grateful for that. On a much more positive note, the nonprofit Washington Regional Alcohol Program believes it's very important to recognize area law enforcement officers for their hard work and their dedication to the fight against impaired driving. To that end, 
Let's get to the moment you guys have been waiting for. RAPS 2021 Law Enforcement Awards of Excellence for Impaired Driving Prevention. A well-deserving honoree has been nominated by the Chief of Police or Sheriff from each jurisdiction in the Washington metro area. In addition to a plaque for the RAP, all honorees will receive a pair of complimentary Washington Nationals tickets courtesy of the Nats, as well as a $25 gift card to Glory Days Grill courtesy of Glory Days Grill. This morning, our co-host, Chief Wasson, you can come on up there if you would like, and I will be joined by a very special guest to help present this year's awards. As many of you know, RAPS Law Enforcement Awards of Excellence for Impaired Driving Prevention have a very special meaning and are annually bestowed in memory of Metropolitan Motor Patrol Officer Anthony W. Sims. During Memorial Day weekend, 1996, Officer Sims was struck by an impaired driver and later passed away from the injuries he sustained. Ironically, he was working on a special holiday assignment looking for impaired drivers at the time of the incident. Here with me today, we have his widow, retired Lieutenant Pamela Slim Sims, formerly of the Metropolitan Police Department, to help present this year's honors in his loving memory. for your dad and I think that your top cop maybe sent you something to make you smile exactly. at the entrance this morning <laughs> he did. right I think he, he did. did okay let's begin this year's award ceremony and I say this almost every year with a name like Malay that looks like mullet or mullet or mullet I get it and I am trying my best to pronounce everybody's names properly Kurt and I go back and forth I say what about this one what about that one we're going to start today with the Alexandria Police Department our first awardee has been an instrumental part of the Alexandria Police Department's enforcement efforts to prevent impaired driving. 
He's described as strategic and proactive in his traffic education and enforcement efforts, which is shown in his 295 traffic safety encounters this past year. He's committed to addressing motorists who operate their vehicles under the influence of alcohol or drugs and has led all other officers in this regard. Individually, he's responsible for removing 20 intoxicated motorists from our roadways this past year alone. Please join me in congratulating Officer Jordan Honeyman of the Alexandria Police Department. Congratulations, thank you. Arlington County Police Department. This year, Arlington County has had two officers who were instrumental in the reduction of impaired drivers. Our first of the two awardees is currently assigned to the patrol section midnight shifts and makes the reduction and enforcement of impaired driving a priority. Since June 2020, he's made 26 DUI arrests in Arlington County, which is more than any other officer in his agency during that same time frame. When this officer is not conducting his own DUI investigations, he routinely assists officers with their investigations. In addition, he takes time to assist newer officers with writing DUI blood draw search warrants. This awardee is proactive when it comes to DUI enforcement and routinely conducts patrols of the Arlington community to reduce the number of impaired drivers. Unfortunately, this awardee was not able to make it today, but we would still like to honor him. Please join me in congratulating Officer Alexander Rodriguez from the Arlington County Police Department. Thank you. Arlington County's second awardee is lauded by his agency's leadership for being the benchmark for impaired driving enforcement. Within the past 12 months, he's made 13 DUI arrests. Additionally, he's assisted his colleagues with numerous other DUI and DUID investigations. As a Spanish translator, he's also frequently called upon to assist with DUI investigations for Spanish-speaking subjects. This officer is committed to keeping the community safe through his enforcement of DUI laws. He's proven himself to be a valuable member of the Arlington County Police Department, which is why we're recognizing him today. Please join me in congratulating Officer Sean Povita from the Arlington County Police Department. Our next awardee is a second year recipient of this regional honor. He's praised for being highly skilled at DUI enforcement as exemplified with his making 14 DUI arrests in the calendar year 2021 alone, an impressive feat noting he patrols just over six square miles. He was a recipient of the 2020 MAD Award as well as RAP's 2020 Law Enforcement Award. Unfortunately, he was unable to attend today, but we still would like to honor him. Please join me in congratulating the City of Fairfax Police Department in his second year receiving this honor, PFC Zachary Davis. County Police Department. Our next awardee has over 30 years in law enforcement and is an original member of his agency's DWI enforcement squad. Dedicated to ridding Fairfax County's roadways of impaired drivers, he's credited with the apprehension of 556 intoxicated or impaired drivers. Unbelievable. In addition to his regular duties, he holds a week-long advanced DWI course at the Criminal Justice Academy, a course which builds on the knowledge received during basic training. Graduates of this course have increased the rate of apprehension of impaired drivers. His supervisors tout his passion and abilities to detect impaired drivers, which have reduced the threats to public and road safety. Please join me in congratulating Master Police Officer Stephen Fayette of the Fairfax County Police Department.
Our next awardee is now a fourth year recipient of this regional honor and is described by his agency's leadership as a consistent and diligent person when it comes to traffic enforcement. For the time period of October 20th, 2020 to October 20th, 2021, he's made about two thirds of his entire agency's arrests with a total of 29 DUI arrests. He's also praised for his immaculate reports, which are thorough and often serve as examples of DUI report writing and structuring. Along with enforcing DUI laws, this awardee devotes his time and training of new officers in DUI enforcement, arrests, and court procedures. With his commitment to community safety, it is clear that this officer deserves to be recognized for all of his efforts. Please join me in congratulating PFC Bryce Cooper of the City of Falls Church Police Department. Department. This next awardee has consistently been one of the top producing officers in his agency in DUI detection and enforcement from July 2020 to July 2021. He made 23 DUI arrests and has a total of over 41 DUI career arrests. Because of his skills, he will also be taking on the additional duties of training new officers in DUI detection and proper arrest procedures this fiscal year. Because of his willingness to succeed and exceed standards, his supervisors are proud to say that he truly deserves to be recognized for his consistent hard work. Please join me in congratulating Corporal Stephen Mather of the Hurton Police Department. Sheriff's Office. Our next awardee has been employed with the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office for more than two years. He's committed to curtailing and apprehending DUI offenders with 18 DUI arrests this past year alone. His dedication to public safety and enforcement is reflected by his response to 1,167 calls for service, including 274 traffic stops where at least 60 citations were issued and 33 arrests made. His commitment to enforcement daily protects Loudoun County's roadways. Please join me in congratulating Deputy Tyler Giles of the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. Maryland State Police. Our next awardee has been applauded for his outstanding work ethic and drive when it comes to impaired driving detection and enforcement. During 2020, his agency's leadership write that he excelled in all areas of enforcement at the College Park Barrack in Prince George's County, leading the barrack with 1,620 traffic stops and 2,586 documents issued, as well as making 76 arrests of impaired drivers, including ensuring successful conviction through fabulous report writing and courtroom testimony, all while earning Trooper of the Year honors. Please join me in congratulating Trooper Logan Speak of the Maryland State Police. Metropolitan Police Department. Our next nominee is a five-year member of the Metropolitan Police Department and is described as one of its brightest young stars. He's helped keep the city safe by taking impaired drivers off the roadways and likely saving countless lives. Out of the 332 arrests he's made in the past year, 50 of those were alcohol-related traffic infractions. His supervisors report that his unwavering enthusiasm shines in the department and contributes to the overall roadway safety. Please join us in congratulating Officer Margot Dane Van Riel, the Metropolitan Police Department. <laughs> Pamela said she could frown behind her mask, everybody would know, but I can tell she's smiling by her eyes. Do you have a little woo-woo for Metropolitan Police? 
Metropolitan Washington Airport's authority. This next awardee quickly established himself at his agency with notable displays of work ethic and an eagerness to assume additional responsibilities. He displays leadership within his patrol division and volunteers to work during alternate shifts. This includes during the midnight hours where he regularly conducts self-initiated DUI enforcement. Due to his dedication, he was one of the top producers for DUI arrests last year. Widely considered a leader among his teammates, his agency's leadership tells that he truly deserves to be recognized for his consistent hard work. Please join me in congratulating Corporal Stephen Mann of the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority Police Department. Police, oh, South South Montgomery County. It's where I live. It's where I was born and where I grew up. Our next awardee is now a second-year recipient of this regional honor and is known department-wide for his dedication to seeking out impaired drivers. As part of the Montgomery County Police Alcohol Initiatives Unit, this awardee has been instrumental in keeping roads safe for impaired drivers. In 2020, he made 126 DUI arrests, which was the most for the entire department and has currently made 62 arrests to date in 2021. Over his short career, he's arrested over 600 people for driving under the influence. Along with his stellar enforcement record, this awardee has continued to aid other officers and agencies with DUI enforcement by teaching numerous police academy classes for new recruits, as well as refresher courses for senior officers. Please join me in congratulating Sergeant Patrick Kep of the Montgomery County, Maryland Department of Police. George's County Police Department. Our next awardee is now a second year recipient of this regional honor and has distinguished himself in his Maryland agency. A committed professional, he's assigned to the National Harbor Unit of the Special Operations Division. Since January of this year, he's arrested 13 impaired drivers. Further worries, he's taken a proactive approach to DUI enforcement. He's also an instructor for his department's DUI enforcement programs, teaching recruits standard field sobriety testing. A certified breath tech operator, as well as a certified drug recognition expert. He is on call for requests throughout Southern Maryland. Please join me in congratulating Sergeant Wilbur Alvarez from the Prince George's County Police Department. Police Department. Our next awardee is touted for demonstrating his commitment to impaired driving prevention. In just this past year, he led all department officers in DUI arrests, taking 42 impaired drivers off the road. In 2020, he also produced top numbers with 76 DUI arrests. He's been recognized for his dedication to impaired driving prevention by being nominated and awarded by Mothers Against Drunk Driving this year. Due to his commitment to ridding all roadways of impaired drivers, his supervisors write that he deserves to be recognized for his efforts. Please join me in congratulating Officer William Ward of the Prince William County Police Department. assigned to the Special Operation Division since March of 2019. In August of 2019, he completed standardized field sobriety training and was recently selected to attend a Drug Recognition Expert School hosted by the Maryland State Police. In the field, he's applied his skills and since December 2020 has made eight DUI arrests and has administered numerous standardized field sobriety tests to help keep our roads safe. Please join me in congratulating Officer Ryan and Corrigan of the United States Capitol Police. United States Park Police. 
Our next awardee is a member of his agency's traffic safety unit and has been described as a leader of their department in the field of traffic enforcement and impaired driving detection. This past year, he's made 19 arrests of impaired drivers on the roadways in and around the Washington metro region. Additionally, he's had issue, he has issued over 100 traffic violation notices. Moreover, this officer confiscated three firearms as well as a sizable amount of narcotics. In addition to keeping our roads safe, he also takes the time to instruct the next generation of officers in the study and application of impaired driving enforcement and detection by serving as a standardized field sobriety testing instructor. Please join me in congratulating Officer Ben Tomasello of the United States Park Police. Virginia State Police. Our final award evening honor today is touted by his agency's leadership as a highly motivated worker who never shies away from hard work and is passionate about keeping our roads safe from impaired drivers. He led the area with 43 DUI arrests. In addition to the arrests, he made a total of 28 misdemeanors and 34 felony arrests. His commitment to making roadways a safer place to drive is why he's being recognized today. Please join me in congratulating Trooper Carlos Alejo from the Virginia Department of State Police. All of the officers honored today have demonstrated an outstanding commitment to the fight against drunk driving and underage drinking. On behalf of the Washington Regional Alcohol Program, I wish to thank them. I know you all would like to thank them for what they have done, and we wish them the best of luck in the future. Thank you all again. And as a traffic reporter who deals with crashes every day of the week and sometimes sadly fatal crashes or DUI or drunk driving crashes, I really thank you as well as just your average person who's on the roads, your average person who's sharing information about the roads for doing what you do and keeping us all safe, because I know without you, those numbers would be much higher. Thank you. Thank you as well to Chief Lawson and Lieutenant Pamela Sims. Always nice to see you. Every year she tells me, can I come babysit your kids? Or what? I'm gonna do, one of these years, I'm gonna take you up on it. You gotta be careful what you, what you offer around me. Finally today, as evidence with today's program, community support plays a vital role in the success of RAP and its programs like Sober Ride. Anheuser-Busch has been a generous partner supporting RAP initiatives for many years. In fact, just this fall, RAP awarded the company its 21st consecutive RAPI award for these efforts. At this time, I would like to introduce to you Anheuser-Busch's Reed Teschner, Director of the Government Affairs, for a welcome checked presentation. on behalf of Anheuser-Busch and our local wholesalers, uh, thank you so much for the work that RAP and our members of the law enforcement community do to keep our roadways safe. Uh, we understand as the uh, largest producer of beer on the globe uh, what, an, what a serious responsibility we have in promoting impaired driving awareness. So um, thank you again to RAP and uh, everyone here for your continued work and uh, we'll, we appreciate the uh, support and continue to look forward to support RAP uh, for the years uh, ahead. If you'll take a look at this check, we are very, very grateful. $25,000 from Anheuser-Busch. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Reed Rab. Greatly appreciate your support and dedication to the cause, and that is a lot of money that will do a whole lot of good, so thank you. As you get ready to celebrate the upcoming holidays, please think of the thousands of people, friends, loved ones who've been injured or killed in drunk driving crashes. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, and you all think about these people all the time, and it's why you do what you do. Think of Officer Sims and Liotta. Think of the innocent victims and their families. 
Sober ride we know is available. We have to remind everyone we know how to designate a driver. They can visit soberride.com for more information. Now before we end, this was the super awesome part where everybody can get involved and perhaps be a winner as well today. I'd like to ask former RAP chairman, Gary Cohen, to come up here for a special announcement and to help us draw today's door winner. Prize winners. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Pat Burke is supposed to do this part, but as we heard earlier, he's got a great excuse. I can't think of a better uh, excuse than to see your uh, son graduate from the police academy. So for those of you that don't remember me, uh, I was rap, uh, I'm Gary Cohen. I was rap chairman from 2017 uh, to 2020, and Kurt told me I was done. But here I am. Um, I stayed involved for a lot of reasons. It's obvious that you know this is an amazing organization. And I don't know uh, a better run organization as well. So one personal note, uh, I just wanted to offer my personal thanks to every all the winners here, but even the people that didn't win, the people that came in second place and third place, they're all out there doing, you're all out there doing the hard work. Uh, the RAP organization, though, is an amazing organization. I, I do this, when I used to have the microphone, I used to always say it, so you gotta hear me again. Um, it's a three-person organization. Uh, and I just have to keep reminding you that, that this organization, you know, runs on the coattails of Kurt, but his able-bodied staff, and you know, we have some new members of the staff uh, this year. It, it's really um, uh, amazing what they can accomplish uh, with three people. But it, it all goes to the point um, that it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens with volunteer leadership, and it happens with sponsors. So thank you to Anheuser-Busch and all the many sponsors uh, that come along with it. But today I have a, a, an exciting uh, announcement. But before I start, I'm supposed to uh, thank you, Melissa, for seven years of uh, incredible support for this organization. coming back and I think for the tower. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, constant support and for doing this out of your basement last year. I don't know that we have to thank you in person for that, um, but it, it, it's incredible. But today we have a, uh, a big announcement. Um, as you know, you know the voluntary leadership is, is what uh, Kurt and his team get the credit. They're the, the, the paid members, uh, but the volunteer leadership and the board that we put together every year is an incredible group of people. Um, two of those uh, people that uh, have been long-term members of our board are the past chairman, last year's chairman, Chris Hennig, and our director, Travis Gibbons. Um, both of them work for this little startup that some of you may have heard of called Amazon, and they both went to work for the new Amazon headquarters there in Arlington. Uh, and I'm honored to use this forum to announce that uh, because of Chris and Travis, uh, champion wraps champion uh, involvement in the community. Uh, this is now translated into a 2022 community partnership with Amazon, where the company currently constructing its second quarters in, uh, headquarters in Arlington is slated to become a partner in the local fight against drunk driving and underage drinking by becoming an official 2022 Sober Ride sponsor. We welcome Amazon as a highly local donation uh, since they're going to be based right here in Arlington, additionally including uh, including supporting uh, perhaps public safety initiatives throughout the year. So thank you, even though Chris and Travis are not here this morning, we just wanted to say thank you to them, and especially thank you to Amazon for, for signing up. So uh, that's, the, that's the big news, and um, you know, as they build their, I think their Helix just got approved, I read in the news this morning. Uh, but now the real excitement is we get to do our door prizes, and this is the fun part. So Melissa, you wanna come back up and help me um, we have 10 door prizes this year, and I think you all know the routine. You have, hopefully everybody has a red ticket. Um, and you know, the, the prizes today include um, a lot of tasty treats, uh, but also the PC resistance, as they say, is uh, two pairs of Washington Capitals tickets. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll get to see Alex, you know, break, uh, break the record for most goals ever scored. I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, first prize um, is a Winter Wonderland snack bowl. 
featuring Ghirardelli chocolates, winter, winterland shortbread, and more. We have a lot of edibles this year. And the winner is 861. Last three digits, 861. All right. We have a second Winter Wonderland snack bowl featuring featuring Ghirardelli chocolate, Winter Winterland shortbread, and more. And the winner is eight three seven. Eight three seven. All right. Next up is we have a holiday package of Goudron Belgian chocolates. And the winner is 828. 828. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a Popcorn Factory holiday gift bag featuring five flavors of popcorn. Not one, not two, but five <laughs> flavors of popcorn. The winner is 817. There you go. It comes with a little package of dental floss. Uh, I'm in a silly mood, sorry. Um, next up is the third Winter Wonderland snack bowl featuring Ghirardelli chocolate. Winter, Winterland shortbread and more. Eight five seven. There you go. The case is sponsored. <laughs> yeah, but it's really good shot. Uh, Winter Wonderland snack bowl again. The winner is eight hundred. Another holiday package of Cadron Belgian chocolate, 830. Belgian chocolate is the best. There you go. And one more popcorn factory holiday gift bag, five flavors of popcorn, 792. Yay! Italia pays to sponsor. <laughs> All right, finally, two grand door prizes. The first, two lower level Capital One Arena tickets to see your Washington Capitals take on the Winnipeg Jets uh, January 18th at 7 p.m. All you got to do is show up. We know exactly when you got to be there. And the winner is 807. 807. <laughs> And today's final door prize, two more lower level Caps tickets to see the Caps take on the Ottawa Senators, December 27th. What else are you going to do right after Christmas? There's nothing else going on. Um, 7 p.m., December 27th. The winner is 819. There you go. <laughs> Okay, that concludes this year's Law Enforcement Awards. I want to offer once again my special thank you to everyone participating. Please be safe on the highways. Um, and thank you all for being here this morning. I would like to ask that.